Okay, hey everybody. Uh, my name is Jarrett. Uh, I am a data scientist at Stapit. Um, before that, I spent about two and a half years uh, working for uh, DestinationLighting.com, a online lighting fixture retailer, um, doing more just kind of data science stuff. Um, my background is in statistics, and after crossing paths with Shiloh, I kind of got roped into the world of e-commerce. And ever since then, I've just been trying to do <coughs> mathy, nerdy things as possible in the e-commerce world. Um, so the topic I kind of wanted to cover today is retargeting, also known as remarketing. I might use them interchangeably, um, but I mean the same thing here. Um, most of you obviously know what it is, but just to kind of get us on the same page real quick, it's you know targeted advertising at users who have visited your site already and have left. They haven't converted yet. Um, specifically, I'm looking at display retargeting. Uh, so this channel, along with every marketing channel, has <coughs> one of the big uh, problems, or at least one of the big questions we need to answer, is how do we value it? You know, how do we know how much value a channel is driving? Uh, do we know is it worth the cost? Should I be investing more or less in it? That's obviously a difficult problem to solve for with retargeting. Um, and uh, there are some options. Uh, so you could try attribution. That's kind of the go-to for solving a lot of marketing valuation problems. Um, you definitely, in most cases, don't want to take a market uh, a tool self-reporting at face value. Um, tools like GA or other attribution services offer something um, more fair and divides up kind of revenue, but it's still mostly a subjective thing. Attribution is really just a, a guess on how the logic works, uh, and it's still problematic. So uh, I want to go through a quick thought experiment about why I'm skeptical, or why I think we should be skeptical to begin with, and to think, can we even design a better way to manipulate last click attribution than what retargeting is able to do? Uh, your client lets you cookie all their users. They identify the ones that are just about to convert anyways, card abandoners. They bombard them with ads everywhere they go, and if you get them to click on a few ads, you get full credit for that sale. Um, so that's, I, I, don't, I think that's super unfair, but I just want to say that's why I think I need to be skeptical about just taking an attribution <coughs> model uh, on the surface when it comes to retargeting. However, if you talk to retargeting vendors, or any display vendors, they'll tell you just the opposite. They'll say, we're actually getting short shrift from click-based attribution models, and they make a fairly compelling argument why. Uh, they will talk to you about the view-through interaction. And it's this interaction where a user sees a retargeting ad or display ad, and it works. It makes them want to come back to the site, but they are smart enough to not just be clicking on random banner ads they see around the internet. So they come to your site via the, ad the address bar or a, a Google search. Like they, you know, they, they use something else. And, and when that happens, the, your display channel gets no credit in an attribution <coughs> model. So they say that's sort of changing them. Um, but how much is that really happening? Obviously, the, it, it, I can see it happening, but can we actually prove it? I'm, I'm a data person. I want to actually be able to see it happening. And even if we can verify that these are happening, how would we put a, a value on them, a number on them? I'm going to try and answer that. Um, so test number one, uh, impression tracking. Uh, let's see if, I, if we can verify that this view through thing is even happening in the first place. Um, I, I, I work with a, a company called Polytab who does click stream kind of tracking. And they also do impression tracking. They have a pixel they send out to your uh, display vendors. And that pixel fires off a notice every time they serve an impression to one of your users. So that way you can kind of track uh, those impressions uh, sort of timestamp in your user's shopping path. You can know when they happen and if it you know, comes, uh, sort of relates to their visits to your site. Um, Evo.com was kind enough to share with me three months of that data, which include three months of impression tracking for their Google Display Remarketing campaign. Um, so having that data though, how do I even identify what a view through event looks like? I can't read their intent of the user. Um, so I tried to set it up through two sort of chronological conditions that I think would uh, be typical of maybe what a view through would look like. One is that the user has been away from the site for an extended period of time, so they're not shopping their current. And then two is, within very close proximity to being served an impression, they return to your site, um, and then specifically for view-throughs, by not clicking on the ad itself, but they, did, they came back through another channel. Um, this could, what, what reactivation could mean could depend, depending, could, could differ uh, based on how long you've been away. So I set up multiple windows to try and capture this. And I think this is pretty generous to what your definition of view-through might be, but an example is like you've been away for more than an hour, and then you come back within five minutes of seeing an impression. Or on the other side, you, you've been away for like four days and you come back within four hours of seeing an impression. So even if I you know, use this kind of generous thing, we found for these three months, there were about 98,000, 97,000 regular old ad clicks. And to that, there were about 12,000 of these non-click impression-driven visits. Uh, even if I treated those as touches in a last-click model, that would account for about $19,000 in revenue compared to what was already given to ad clicks. That's an extra like 18% in revenue. So maybe that's how much we're missing with this whole sort of view-through activity. Okay, so that, that, that's some insight into if view through is happening. But still, all that was just based on still using some sort of a last touch model, which I still think is super subjective. I want something more concrete, more scientific. So I went back to the drawing board. The A-B test. Uh, so let's treat this, let's treat retargeting like a, like a clinical experiment. Um, we, we can do this through, um, uh, through cookie splitting, basically, because you know how you know, retargeting works is they 
they cookie the users when they're on your site, and then they get to follow around, show them ads, and all that. So through uh, GTM, uh, we can set up uh, basically a tag that allows your users to be randomly sorted into two pools when they come to your site for the first time. And what we did here, this is a, at my time at Destination Lighting, is we set it up so that Critio only had access to this one pool, this one half of our users. The other half, Critio had no knowledge of, no access to, completely walled off from. So then we have a control group, and we have a group that's been exposed to Critio. And we ran this for uh, six plus months, and just kind of looking at results of Critio versus this control group. Um, so over these six months, we spent about $13,000 on Critio <coughs> retargeting. Uh, users obviously should be the same. Sessions are more, that's kind of what you're going for uh, with you know, retargeting. Uh, purchases were higher, not falling for this Uh Same slide again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And you can see the how here. Conversion rate went up a little bit. AOV actually went up, which was super surprising. In fact, the AOV rise was more significant, statistically significant, than the conversion rate increase, which was very, very surprising. But altogether, an increase of about $90,000 for about $13,000 in spend. Um, on a per user level, uh, you know, about 19 cents per user higher in the Critio group, about you know, three cents more per user in spend, which comes up to an ROI of about 677%, which is not bad at all. Um, DL's last click attribution in GA had pretty over that time at about 123% ROI, which is pretty terrible. So uh, that's a pretty big challenge to, to what you would have thought, maybe looking at traditional attribution models. Um, so quick, uh, so takeaways. Um, did we learn anything? Uh, how should we value display retargeting? Um, one is that view throughs are probably a thing. Like I, I think that it makes sense, and we did see that there were a lot of uh, visits that were driven in close sort of proximity to impressions that sort of seemed to reactivate users. But even if we were being super generous with that, that was maybe an extra 15 to 20% of traffic that we're missing. So features aren't really the thing that is making display poorly valued by attribution models. Um, and with or without view through, uh, that A-B test suggests that we could be um, undervaluing retargeting by as much as four or five times with standard attribution models. Uh, so clearly the click to the view through is not it. I think there may be something uh, more gradual and long term in how retargeting works on people and that it keeps uh, the product or brand in sort of in sort of your mind in in the long run, um, but I, clearly there is the A/B test is really the more pure sort of experiment uh, form of this, and it, it just seems to show that there wasn't that.